Hi everyone, so I'm here with Jordan Heron. He's the filmmaker behind a uh, fantastic short film, GPS. Congratulations. Welcome to Valencia. Thank you, Steve. I actually said Venice earlier, and I had to change the comment. No, so I, I was struggling. I said, welcome to, are we in Valencia, Venice? So Venezuela, Venice. <laughs> welcome Venice to Beach. that V place. Yeah, that V place. Well, well it's, it's actually, um, very quickly, uh, I'm sure Jordan will agree. It's actually a fantastic city. It's beautiful. I love it here. I love Spain. This is my first time in Valencia, and uh, or sorry, be pro proper Valencia. Oh, Valencia, yeah. And uh, this is my first time here, and I love it. It's great. I mean, the weather is perfect. The booze is cheap. The, that the is booze a real is cheap. Support, yeah. um, we're about two subway stops, or or a. 20 minute, 25 minute walk from the old city downtown. And it is magnificent, frankly. This whole place is magnificent. Oh, I, I'm having a great time. So, no, no pressure, but if, if we have another festival in, you know, here, <laughs> that would be nice. Well, we're having, we, well, I'll go, <laughs> spoiler, spoiler alert, we're coming back next year, because. Uh, I just I'm, hope I have another film well, done next yeah, year. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll just, well, we miss you for you can do that. That's true, I could submit an old yeah, film. Yeah, you can submit an old film. But actually, it's, um, yeah, it's, I know we're going off piece a bit, but. I've been blown away by it. It's been, I mean, we knew it was going to be nice. Obviously, Spain, the you know, yeah. the um, Madrid, Barcelona, which I've been to. So I had a yeah. pretty good, but it is stunning, absolutely incredible. Yeah, I, blown away. I was at a film festival in Madrid two years ago, and then just a couple of months ago, I was in Malaga, just on vacation. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, it's a lovely country. It's lovely great. in here. So GPS. Um, yes. Obviously, the synopsis, please. Obviously, I've seen this. This quirky. Well, over to you. Um, well, it's, it started off as just a joke. If you, if you are driving locally and you have your GPS just on automatically, you tend to ignore it mm. because you, you know the streets, you know where you're going. And uh, so we used to make jokes about um, having a very sarcastic GPS who would go, I told you to turn left. You didn't turn left. You're supposed to. And you, that's the third time in a <laughs> row you've ignored me. I'm shutting off. So it was just a joke. And then I, I mentioned this to a filmmaker and he said, well, why don't you write it? And I said, but it's just a joke, it's, it's, and it's not even that funny a joke. Uh, and then one day I was bored and felt like writing something, and that conversation came back to me. So I just started writing it with no idea where it's going to go. I, it, that's a very dangerous thing for a feature oh. film. You know, you, you need to have no, 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 a plot. You yeah, need yeah. to have a structure. But short films... No, beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, but, but short film, I just started writing. And it turned out to be quite a poignant um, story about a man who never connected well with his mother during life but now that she's dead and haunting his gps they do form that connection uh and he has that that one last chance and then uh, you, this isn't your first four into comedy we should point this out I know. well it's i i don't i don't think i've ever done a comedy but what i do are character dramas that are funny yeah, yeah. right comedic I mean, elements th might, yeah. there are a lot of comedic elements you, you mentioned you no know, um the first the first short film I ever had in a festival was called Not the End of the World. Yeah. And, it, and it's about a guy whose family has been cursed and every few generations an angel comes by to try and destroy the world and, they have to, and he has to stop him. And that was quite funny um, because he's ignoring the angel and trying to take the garbage out and he basically tricks the angel into leaving. Yeah. Uh, so it's very comedic, but I never saw it as a comedy. Uh, and when I mentioned to the author of the short story that we were nominated in the comedy category, I was afraid she'd be offended. She goes, I thought it was hilarious when I wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so the same thing with, with GPS. It's not a comedy. Um, it's, it's a poignant little character-driven story, but it's funny. There's funny lines. In my opinion, the most serious of films should have funny bits to them. This has a few more than, than most of the serious films. Because uh, I, I, mean, really <coughs> I mean, if you don't mind me, I mean, you are, to me, you're quite laid back. And that's kind of, to me, I mean, you know, that's yep. you know, it's my opinion. Yeah, it may be wrong. I mean, oh, I, no, laid, laid back. Somebody said, are you ready for the interview? Go, I don't know. They're going to ask me questions. I'll answer them. That's ready. <laughs> are you like this when you're making a film? Are, are you sort of quite relaxed, relaxed? I suppose you've got to, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. I'm, I'm relatively relaxed in most things I do. I'm a project manager in the day job so I can afford to be a filmmaker and and so schedules schedules and planning is what I do so when we get to shoot day it's pretty relaxed because we pretty much know what we're gonna do <laughs> we're also usually on my dime so I'm not worried about investors someday I'd love to be invested I'd love to be worried about investors someday the guy needs you have money 
<laughs> um, he's, he's worth investing. He's brilliant. Brilliant filmmaker. But, uh, uh, but I, I have a really good team. What's the point of getting stressed, I suppose? That's just going to add to the grief, I guess, if you're getting right. stressed out about Well, I, I had a friend of mine many years ago. We were stuck in traffic, and he goes, I don't understand people who get upset in traffic because it doesn't make you go faster. It just makes you miserable. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, I get stuck in traffic. It's like, I'm having a great day. Here I am stuck in traffic. This is awesome. Because I may as well enjoy myself because if, if I have a horrible time, it's going to take the same length of time to get there. So making films, you're going to make films, you may as well enjoy the ride. Um, you do have to keep people moving. There's a certain amount of, there's always a certain amount of stress, but I, my team, I, my team loves working to the, together because we, we put up with each other's foibles and we're, we're cool with each other. We're mostly laid back and nobody's in everybody's faces about get this right, get this done. Well, I suppose even so, I know you said this came from an idea, but then you've got to sort of put it together. And it's, I mean, you're making it sound quite easy, but it's not. I know filmmaking is, is still a, a process. So, the, and, and there's a newbie on this, a new guy, I think, wasn't there on this. Was it the, um, was it the DP? Someone knew you brought into the project? No, no, it? no. It was the same old crew. But what we did was um, I had directed short films that I had acted in before, and I didn't like it. Right. I don't like splitting my focus. So... Robin Goodfellow, who directed this film, yeah. um, she, she's actually the, the, the wife of the DP. Right. They, they go together. Um, and she's quite talented in her own right. She is a, a writer. Um, she's done set medic and, and, and production assistant and um, assistant producer, things like that, on other short films with me. Uh, and when I said... I wrote it, I produced it, I'm acting it, I do not want to direct it, Robin, I want you to direct it. Did she go, oh my God. And no, she was thrilled. She, she wanted it, she was thrilled with the opportunity to direct. The, when you talk about stress, the, the tiniest bit of stress for me was when I handed her a script and said, here's what we're doing. And then when we had our last pre-production meeting just before shooting, and she goes, here's the final script. And I went, I, I I gave you the script. Oh. She goes, no, this is the director's script. Oh, no, no, no. And no. I read it, and she improved it. Oh, no, having really? better, Having a, a, a new look, having new eyes, having a female's input onto the whole thing. I read the short story. I, I read the, or not the short story, the screenplay that she provided me with. And it was, I mean, it was, 90% of it was the same. But she tweaked things here and there, and yeah, I, little... I said, this is better. So I am, I am really pleased with my, uh, my decision to bring her in. Um, or actually, I mean, she was part of our team anyway. It was my, I'm proud of the decision to step back and not try to do everything. I didn't, I didn't want to direct when I acted. Um, I find that very difficult. And she did a great job. I'm really pleased with what she came up with because it's not, it's not the same short I would have made if I was directing. And but when I like you, it. And, when you, and on that note, I know, I know you said this is a finished script and yeah, okay, we're going to shoot with it. But then, of course, I assume you'd already scouted the location, what it, or locations he's when they're driving the car. Yeah, well, but even that's not a five minute job. You've got to go, I don't know where about she shot, and you, I don't know, he went all over your home city. I don't know. I don't know how you've done it. I, I consider that part of the producer's job. In a small film, that's the producer's job, is to do all this stuff. Now, I should have brought more people in on the location scouting because, you know, there was a bit of disagreement as to what would have been the best what could have been the best location. Mm. But I was working with the county in, in my local area. This is the first time we got a film permit. Ah, uh, now that's quite interesting because... Well, the, the previous films were done like literally at my house. Yeah, yeah. I don't need a film permit or insurance, this is my house. But we wanted to use a cemetery. We briefly considered building a cemetery in oh my, my backyard. God. Oh my God, and no. it's like, well, the, I had already met the film guy for the county. So we had a bit of a relationship and I said, I'm going to do, you know, a no budget, really, very small film. How much is an, a film permit for the county? He goes, well, if you've got no budget, then there's no cost. You just need to prove that you have insurance to cover us if something happens. So we actually bought an insurance policy for the first time. Because I suppose the trouble is, Jordan, like anything in life, yeah. everything's fine when everything's going right. But if there's a cock up, you make film. Like, God forbid, I don't exactly. know. You knock someone over. And you haven't got yeah. insurance permit. You're, you're screwed, aren't you? Exactly. So we bought insurance. That was the only thing we had to do to get the, the county film permit. And I had to meet with the, with the, 
the guys who take care of the cemetery, I had to meet with them to show them what I wanted to do and how I was going to respect the other graves mm. and, and, and not show too many names because they didn't want people's, you know, they didn't want oh, people's relatives popping up. Oh, of course, you've got to think about that. Yeah, yeah, not literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, but to be honest, I don't know if this film is ever going to show where I live. <laughs> no, but I think, you know, it is, it is an int- like I said, an interesting point is it's all fine until there's a problem. Exactly. And then, you know, you just don't want that kind of grief. Yeah. And that's also really nice for them to say, look, we'll give you a permit. If you haven't got any budget, it's fine. Because yeah. believe me, if that's the UK, you still have to pay for the nose. No, it, it, they just, they wanted to know, say, are, are you going to block traffic? No. Are you going to be out in the public streets? No. I mean, because, there, I mean, there are, there are car scenes in yeah. this, but all we did was we, we set up the camera on the corner of the street and we just filmed the car driving by. That was it. We didn't stop traffic for anything. The shots inside the car, we were just driving around town. Yeah, literally just the camera on yeah, the there. Yeah, yeah, dash mounted yeah. camera or, or, or uh, side mounted camera and just driving around. I had more problems with the union than I had with what? insurance. Oh God, I, I knew there was going to be a complication. Are we, are we supposed to say this on camera? Say allegedly or something to cover yourself. No, the union, when I showed the union, uh, because I am a union actor, uh, when I showed the union the script to get permission to do it, they said, you can't act and drive at the same time. That's stunt work. You need to oh close the God, road and get police. And I said, but I act and drive all the time. Well, what do you mean? I'm in community theater. I put my lines on a CD and I put it in the, 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 the player you repeat and I lines, rehearse yeah, my yeah. lines going down the road. She goes, where do you do this? Go, on, the, on the main highway. I'm, I'm acting as I'm driving. I said, it's, I can do both things Yeah, to things be or not to be, that is what you're Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, yeah. Um, and what was the response to that? Because that's a fair point. They, they still were really antsy about it, but their concern was insurance. And so I called the, the there's two insurances. There's the liability insurance and there's the actor's insurance, which is very inexpensive. But I, I called him and said- Well, no liability isn't, because we know that. Well, the liability's not, but, but the actor's insurance is, is fairly inexpensive. And I, I, I called the agent and said, I'm gonna drive and I'm gonna say lines with a dash mounted camera. I said, is that a high risk in your insurance opinion? He goes, no. And so I went back to the union and said, look, if the insurance guy doesn't care, you shouldn't care. <laughs> and they went, all right. I also told them that we'd be on mostly deserted roads at the middle country, which is not quite true. <laughs> I mean, it's a small town, but there are cars. There's lots of cars going by in the movie. But uh, I mean, the only time the the only time when I stop and stare at the camera and say a line, I'd already stopped the car. So, you know, we weren't, we weren't very we weren't dangerous. We weren't breaking any laws or anything. No, we, we didn't. Uh, no, they, there shouldn't have been any distracted driving laws broken there. No, it's coming really well. I mean, you know, we spoke earlier that, so I know your film, your body of work. And it, I like this because this is different to Missy. You know, what I feel about Missy is an earlier film of yours. Um, and I like that range, you know, it's the fact that you can be quite... That's not dramatic, that film, but it's, it's quite... It's enthralling for different reasons. And yet right. This is like a quirky a quirky little film that's... Or I should say, sorry, a quirky short film. But you're right, it's not a comedy per se, it's just a comedic no. things that, ha- that are in it. And, and in fact, on the line of comedy, my wife looks at Missy and then GPS and she goes, are you going to write a film that isn't, like, just, you know, sad? <laughs> Well, yeah, but GPS isn't. Well, I, I understand what she's alluding to. I get it, but it's it's the first time I tried to cry on camera. <laughs> Believe uh, me, every time I look in the mirror, I cry. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> so I'd be fine. Just hide a hide a camera in the camera. You you want an actor's behind the scenes thing? Just cause, because I'm also unit production manager, so we're setting up for the scene where I'm supposed to cry or you know be really broken up. So. I'm letting the crew set up and I said, okay, we're going we're gonna to roll in a couple of minutes. I have to go prepare for the roll. And I go and I listen to Cat Stevens' father and son, Fantastic which track. is being played at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah, yeah it's a great track. And I, just, I listen to that. It's like, okay, I can be sad now. <laughs> Do you know, I didn't even know when I was a massive Cat Stevens fan. And then I sort of forgot about him because the name changed and he disappeared into the ether. Yeah. And a couple of things about him I didn't know. One, that he allegedly I should say um, had an affair with oh Carly Simon I didn't oh, know, yeah. did not know that 
Um, I and, would have if they'd been around oh, at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I think he had a string of lovers. And also, this sounds like really heretical to say this, I didn't realise until the last about 10, five, 10 years ago that he wrote the first cut of The Deepest. Didn't know that. The first cut is The Deepest. Well, Baby I didn't know that till yeah. now. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. He wrote that. <laughs> no, no, I didn't know that. I was like, what? But it's true. Yeah. Well, we're kind of straying off topic. I had I'm no sorry. idea. I had no idea how many really cool songs John Denver wrote. Oh, he did before yeah. he became John Denver, right? I mean, oh, I see. Went, so the pre-John Denver, John well, Denver. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I John Denver is you know like take me home, country roads. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. But I mean, I listened. My dad and, and I both listened to Peter Paul and Mary leaving on a jet plane when I was a kid. John Denver. Yes, John Denver. Yeah, I, didn't I can't. Know that. Yeah, that that does ring a bell. It's only when yeah, I know. He, yeah, yeah, talented guy. Yeah. So we've gone completely off. We've gone now. way off from film yeah, to we have. music that I have no relation to, other than I like it. <laughs> well, no, there was a connection there. We were sort of talking about the music. So, next, anything up on the Oki? We would say in the UK, lots of projects. It's a matter of what we're going to get to first. Um, we've got, uh, we've got, again, a, again, a character drama with some funny bits. Hey. Um, uh, but it's a little longer this time. Oh, so. a feature. Yeah, 45 minutes. Oh, okay. It's one of these middling shorts. It's, yeah. it's one of these ones I can't get into a short festival or into a feature festival, mm -hmm. so I might try you. Hey. <laughs> um, but that, I, I mean, I, I'm not worried about giving it away because I don't think anyone is going to run off and steal this idea on me. Um, the Anglo-Zanzibar War of 1896. Uh, Zanzibar is island just off the east coast of yeah, Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's and a great uh, short story about that. Anyway, I'll, I'll move on there's to a, that. There's a sultanate... And, and in the late 1800s, the British had veto over who was allowed to be sultan. Right. So the sultan dies or was murdered, um, and a new guy steps up, and Britain goes, no, you, you're not our pick. And he goes, oh, yeah, come and get me. Um, so sorry. the Anglo-Zanzibar War is famous for being the shortest war recorded in history. It's 38 minutes long. <laughs> they gave him a deadline till 9 in the morning to leave. And at 9 o'clock, he was still there. So at 9.02, the first cannon shot went off. And at 9.40, the flag came down and he'd scuttered out the back door. And that was it, going so over. So 38 minutes. So my film, because I can't afford to film the Anglo-Zanzibar War, I have no budget. So our film is about an English officer, a young English officer and his mistress, who wake up to the cannon, because it wakes up everybody in town, and goes, Crikey, I've got to get to the war. And by the time they finish arguing and getting... Oh, sorry, it's Victorian clothing. By well. the time they finish getting dressed and arguing, they missed the war. Oh, well, back to bed. So, so that's, that's, that's one of the projects that's upcoming. Another one is a Think uh, Blade Runner Sin City Chicken Run. Oh my so God. this is, this is a, a very dark... It's a fusion. Film noir. It's a fusion it's of a fusion. styles. It's a, it's a film noir detective story entirely acted by chickens so it's an animated Siri. film no live action chickens oh. trust me it's going to be great <laughs> the problem with that is that i mean for the other short films i want a house i go to use my house the problem the, what's taking us the time it's, it's called rhode island dead um what's taking us time is we have to build all the sets by oh, no, hand no, to no. scale no and it's, oh it's, right okay so it's going to be like the size of this hotel to get it to, not quite but it's going to be massive to scale it up isn't it no it's chickens we got to scale everything down oh so you use it you use real chickens yeah like real chickens oh, this is <laughs> we never work like, with children and animals well we figure we're going to have a lot of footage to oh, get God. what we want yeah a lot of b-roll you know we we can't resist it was just too the idea was just too weird um you know another favorite i've got is a, a woman who's struggling in this economy, her parents need help, her kids can't get jobs, so she's looking for another career. And so she thinks, contract killer, that could be good. Um, so I've got a short and a feature version of that we're working on. Oh, we got, I got tons of them, trust me. It's just a matter of finding the time and the money. It's always the money. <laughs> um, it, yeah, money is short, but honestly, time is just as short for us right now. We've got so much to do. And, uh, and coming here to the Fusion Festival. South. South Europe. Valencia, Valencia which we probably mentioned already. Uh, I love it because this, 
this helps me with my inspiration because I, I mean, I have a, a full-time job during the day to pay the bills. Yeah. Um, and occasionally I forget that I'm a filmmaker because I just don't have time. And I come here and talking to all the other independent films and seeing some good and, and some not so good, but mostly some really good, good, films. Yeah, some really good films. And getting to talk to the filmmakers and getting the inspiration. And even the ones that aren't so good, you get inspiration from. It's like, like don't ever do that. <laughs> uh, but no, I've seen some wonderful, wonderful films here. I met a lot of good people. Uh, and I may keep in touch with them, I may not, but they've all been an inspiration in my life. I still speak to some of the filmmakers I met in, in, in Madrid. Madrid and in London. Uh, and uh, it's a really great community because everybody is here to build everybody up. I mean, it's, in theory, there's a competition, there's awards, but really everybody wants everybody to succeed. Yeah, of course and that's really nice. It's not like, it's not like a football tournament where, you know, my team's the best, you suck. You know, it's, it's like my film, I really like it, and your film, I really like that too. And together we can make better films. Thank you. So it's really enjoyable. It's nice to be here. I'm hoping I have something for next year so I have an excuse to come back. Thanks for that, Jordan, it's brilliant. Thanks very Lovely much, Lovely to meet you. Thanks. Thanks.